Hello, gravy babies, and welcome back to more Hearts of Iron for fun. Hey, and it's 2024, and I'm going to be riding it in calmly, collectively. There'll be no weird shenanigans, just a chill game of Hearts of Iron 4. I say that was the first mod I did in the new year. It was Kyle's Redux, but let's not talk about that. Okay, little Timothy's. First off, hit the like and subscribe button, please. Look how close we are to 800,000 and subscribe Timmy's. If you will hit it right now, I wouldn't have to keep asking. Hey, but more importantly, I had a little series that I sometimes come back to where you play Hearts of Iron 4 a bit weirdly. Actually, it's kind of safe to say that's kind of been my whole brand for the past four years. <laughs> Who else would play Hearts of Iron 4 every nation from A to Z? I can't wait for Hearts of Iron 4 at 5 to come out, and I'm gonna do Z to A, and you're all gonna be so surprised when I do so. Okay, so when I did the Battle Cry achievement, not too long ago someone told me either somewhere in the comments reddit or twitter or maybe they dm'd it to me in a dream timmy's do do that sometime uh, it was actually a really stupidly fun way to play china in hoi 4 and i'm gonna give it the old rambler try today okay the strat we're doing today is undoubtedly one of the stupidest strats in hoi 4 but it does just hashtag work and you can do it as any of the warlords like uh, not including communist china for obvious reasons you'll see later but we're gonna go ahead and give it a go as Zibidi Sanma. That's how you say it, canonically, by the way. Zibidi Sanma. Now, I'm assuming this one's probably known to a, a few of you uh, sweaty Hoi 4 little Timmies out there, but for me, I don't think I've ever tried this before. And if I have, I've forgotten. But yeah, I'm just going to take you through it slowly and methodically. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna secure our internal politics. So when we get the PP from that, we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves a advisor to turn to our them. Okay, we've got our political power. Now we're gonna go ahead and do cooperation with the nationalists and go down this a little bit, but not before we get our boy Tanjin, who's gonna take us on a tangent into the world of uh, it does mean, sadly, though, we will be saying goodbye to Marbu Fang because we're going to be changing our political party. And in fact, we're going we're gonna to go with someone completely different. Uh, yeah, we're going to go for Marbu Fang. All right, now, usually I'd keep the old peace pipe around for Marbu Fang, but unfortunately, I need political power very badly this game. So we're going to go ahead and just root out corruption. So goodbye, 40% consumer good factories debuff. Okay, now that we've done reform the administration, we're going to join the Republican government, which is going to be the crux of how we are going to become super powerful today. Uh, yeah, we're also still working on flipping our ideology. We're getting a little bit lucky there, but the faster we do it, the better. So, hurry up, chop chop! Okay, we've joined the Republican government. We're not going to do any of this just yet. In fact, we're just going to sit on all the political power we can by not even doing focuses until we flip now and the Japanese go in on the Chinese. Well, there you go, never event, and that should push us over enough to go ahead, hit the referendum button, and guess what? Brand new leader. It's Marbu Fang. Yeah, and then we're just going to go ahead, join Japan's faction. And they should be going in on the Chinese any second now. So we need to get to work on getting ourselves the Chinese power struggle done. All right. So the best way to do this is actually getting these guys on board. You can get lucky. And some of them will just go ahead and want you to publicly support their political agenda, which is terrible. But we will do one of them. But that will take 225 political power. Away from us. Yeah, some of these guys just want simple stuff, uh, but it, it seems all we're getting is political agenda. Political agenda. Okay, well, that's not great. <laughs> Okay, so before we accept these and just take the political power debuff, we're going to select a couple states here to influence and hopefully get lucky on, and then we're going to sacrifice all our political power. Okay, next uh, we're just playing Will We Get Lucky? Influencing the politics of Shanghai and Sichuan. The answer is no. So once again, Shanghai, I am asking for your vote in the upcoming election of China. Oh, okay. We got Shanghai. If we get the other one right now, we will be set. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and do national leadership right there. And boom, China is gone. Yep. I just annexed 
all of China with the click of a button, got all of their units, and now I don't even have to worry about the Japanese attacking me because I'm in their faction. In which I need to now very quickly consolidate the rest of China. We can do so by joining in on the war effort. Oh yeah, you can also now finally get back to doing your old focus tree, but before we go ahead and do power strong to get the Chinese focus tree, we need to get that uh, research slot, which uh, we've <laughs> kind of just been staring at for a while. And now that we've done and finished and moved to the Chinese focus tree, we're just going to rush down whoever's the new leader of the faction, which is the Guanzi clique, and you're going to notice something a little weird in the peace deal. Okay, so in the peace conference, we're just going to go ahead, take all of Guanzi clique's land right there, hit and turn, and as you'll notice, Japan will not take any land because we have calls on it all. Oh, other than uh, countries that have calls also, like this one province in Manguko, but you don't need to worry about that. And in fact, if you uh, actually hold land anywhere else that you haven't taken, Japan will actually go ahead and give it to you. Uh, which means just like that, you've now unified all of China without fighting Japan and just clicking a couple buttons. Is this a little bit overpowered? Maybe just a little bit. Just look at that right there. World War II has only just kicked off and the Zubidi Sanma Free State is just looking absolutely disgusting. <laughs> but yeah, as soon as China is stable, the industry you can get of them is absolutely disgusting. And don't think just because I'm in Japan's faction right now means I'm sticking in it. So yeah, this part of the game, you can really take it any way you want. You could stick with Japan if you wanted to help take out uh, all of the allies and stuff like that. And maybe even going on the Soviet. So you can go around and, uh, you know, stab them in the back or the face because if they don't see this coming, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but you also have realistically as much time as you want to actually be able to go in on, on them because they are never going to kick you out as far as I know. So they can't justify on you or anything like that. And eventually they're going to run out of stuff to do on that little island and have to go fight the allies. Which means the longer we sit back and relax, the more powerful we get. Okay, so Japan has gone ahead declared war on the allies, which means it is our time to strike. Now I think they might start, yeah, they'll justify us immediately as soon as we leave the their faction, which is no problem. And here they come. Do I join the allies? That, that is incredibly mean, considering my uh, political orientation right now. So sure, why not? Okay, so this is just about where the Japanese managed to push me before they got stuck. So now it's time for Operation Booty Clap Back. Because uh, you see, they're not really naval invading me, and if they are, I just send in my tank divisions and destroy them in seconds. Well, other than uh, Southeast Asia, but I'm not sending my men to die down there. Yeah, you'd kind of be a little bit crazy to want to actually willingly go down here to fight. So, um, as you can see, uh, the AI's there. So, for us to push Japan out in one big swoop, we're gonna need air supremacy, which we're already working on, and the Allies are also sending their fighters over here, too, to make my job even easier. But it's not gonna be the planes that are gonna be the deciding factor here. No, it's going to be a little surprise I've got waiting at the back here. Alright, this is gonna be a pretty simple. We've got the paratroopers lined up, and I have gone ahead and done the doctrine for them, so that when they drop, they will lower the enemy's organization on their units, which will work very nicely because my tanks are on the side here, ready to absolutely roll over the Japanese when they're low org. Okay, here we go. Bit overkill, I won't lie, looking at the Japanese units right now, but we're going to drop them, and then immediately as one of them has dropped, we're going to wait for the rest. Boom, 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 hit the tanks, and we're about to see something beautiful happen. There you go. <laughs> there is the entire Japanese front line completely evaporated. Also, surprisingly, one of the first time I've ever used paratroopers and not lost a single one of them. Okay, I'm pretty sure we rolled over pretty much the entire front line then because they were just so low org after all the paratroopers went in. The AI is like scrambling to get any sort of line going back here, but <laughs> there's just nothing left. Unironically, if you get full air supremacy, you can drop that many paratroopers. It's the equivalent of actually just straight up dropping nukes on the AI. I mean, hey, one day you own Beijing and everything's locked. Fucking A-OK, -okay. the next, the sky is speaking Mandarin. Oh, you know, I didn't think we'd actually get the surrender event from Japan, but yeah, no, we're, we're not accepting that at this point. We want it all. Okay, so I'm pretty certain you can uh, clock on to what we're going to be doing next over in Japan. We should also probably get this done very quickly, because what I'm looking at from the Axis is uh, that they're <laughs> really hammering 
the Soviet home. Yeah, well, it looks like the Allies have got something sorted down there, as Italy has already switched El Sidos. Oh no, not the atomic bombing of Milerovo. Oh no! Okay, we're almost free from the Japan pain. Just need to get up to 75% air superiority and I can drop the boys over and hopefully it all goes well. Okay, I think we are certainly good to go. Good luck, boys! Obviously, this won't be as effective as last time because we can't just run over the enemy, but it should be good enough for us to definitely take the port. Look at that, they're already gone. Yeah, they are just uh, still running on through faster than I could actually uh, fix the front line there. Okay. I don't think that was necessary. <laughs> yeah, I just... I, that's not gonna look too good in the history books. <laughs> As the uh, Chinese army was actually a couple hundred miles away from Tokyo, <laughs> which was left completely undefended when the Americans, I'm assuming, dropped a nuclear bomb on it. Some are calling it a little bit too far. Yeah, although unfortunately uh, the first nuclear bomb was actually dropped on a small village over here, so... And there we go. Very, very nice. Yeah, yeah we ain't even gonna bother taking mainland Japan because what I'm looking for is that fleet, baby. And we're immediately just gonna go ahead and join in against the Germans or I guess what's left of them after they got nuked in the small village of Malervo. Uh, and of course the UK goes ahead and kicks me from their faction. Very nice. Never mind. I'm right back in there. Thanks, Churchill. God, yeah. Also just so glad they've done it the way they have that now just a part of my army is just stuck here <laughs> I can't get it out okay so bear with me now as I wait about five years for my army to get to the UK where they're inevitably going to be kicked out the faction anyway immediately the fact that I've just been given this gigantic navy and I don't even have an admiral but don't worry Wang Hu <laughs> the man for the job <laughs> there you go true Chinese fashion <laughs> so glad I just finally made it to the UK and they decided to kick me there yeah, that's just so nice! Please fix Paradox! It wouldn't be normally too bad, but the problem is I've kind of focused on the whole paratrooper thing, so now I'm just gonna have to respec into getting some uh, actual landing so uh, I can do a naval invasion. But uh, yeah, I guess that's what we're doing. I should be able to paratroop off of my aircraft carriers. Can we get that in there, please, Paradox? All right, yeah, we we ain't falling for this one a third time. I love I did 13% world tension, which was enough apparently to throw everything everything out of the room with Mr. Churchill. I mean, that's actually like almost half of what the US got for justifying on Vichy France, who they didn't even go through with it. It got cancelled. You know, you also dropped a couple nuclear bombs that were uh, a little bit unnecessary, I may add. I feel like that may be a little bit worse than what I took over here in Asia. Why is everyone so mean to Marbu Fang? Well, there you go. Speak of the devil, there goes Stuttgart. Oh, shout out to the British for giving themselves a pretty accurate market garden there. Okay, took forever, but we are finally ready to try this naval invasion. Uh, naval invading with no air is not very fun, but I'm hoping we can get a little lucky and at least get the port and then rush in, get an airport, and we should be good. Okay, so we got this port here. Not bad. I can try to get this one at least before I start moving more troops in, though. All right, nice. Now we just got to hold this, and from here, we should be able to push straight into the Germans. I'm just gonna go ahead and say this once again, go to hell! Oh yeah, also, we've kinda had enough of Marbu Fang in charge, so we're gonna go ahead, hold national referendum, and uh, we're gonna have Marbu Fang instead. Alright, things be looking very good. Only thing holding us back is the airports, but I'm building and capturing way more, so we should be able to roll over them pretty quickly. And also, we are now the People's Republic of Mar. Bufang. So yeah, it's another really good thing about not being in the Allies, or I guess even the Soviets, but mostly the Allies, is that when you do get a landing, if you do get a landing, because it is pretty hard to get one without air supremacy. Uh, well, that does mean that the land will flip to you, and because you liberated it in the peace deal too, I'm pretty sure it means that you can actually take French land or any like land that you liberate in the peace deal, so you don't have to worry about France even being there. I love the fact it's 1948, and I I finally ran out of manpower as China, and I'm actually going to go up to limited conscription. I know, blasphemous. But we've actually uh, moved so fast into Germany there that our arrows actually haven't had time to catch up. Okay. 
now we're just trolling. Yeah, maybe we should be more worried about AI because as we can see, if they ever do get in charge of the nuclear weapons, it's gonna be a free-for-all. The town of Malernovo, or whatever the hell it's called, will never recover. Oh, and there we go. I actually, I actually do have some uh, wall score here. I could do something. What could I do? What What is worth doing here? I guess it's only fair after liberating France that I get to take it. But not this part of uh, France. That goes to the Soviets. Um, it's just living inside me like a tumor. Oh yeah, but there's also a France down here too. Don't forget about that. There's two Frances. Crash that. We got another one down here. Never forget about the Kugelin Frances. They're still around. Oh, I think it's safe to say, uh, yeah, that was a little bit disgusting what we did there. But that was very fun. So yeah, that is another weird and wacky way to play the game. Hearts of Iron 4. As you can see we're still coming up with stupid ways to break this game hey again you could do that as like any of the warlords uh, of my of my knowledge there shanzi zibidi sama yunan guanzi clique i'm not sure if you could do it as Kang or the communists uh, you might be able to anyone that you can flip your ideology to get in japan's faction so yeah i think the only one you probably can't do it with is uh the communist chinese Sinkang might be able to but i never checked so uh, if you want to check it out yourself you can do that and waste your time doing it i'm not gonna Dude, I'm not gonna waste any more of my time though. It's 1948 for God's sake, Timmy. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, hit the subscribe button down below for more weird and wacky ways to play Hearts of Iron Floor. <laughs> Hold on, sorry, I had a <coughs> Mark Poofang in my mouth.